WABX Detroit, you have on. This is Pereno until 6 today on, on what happens to be my last day in the afternoon show. I'm moving to the night show. Ken Calvert will be your afternoon disco host every day here on the X. Um, we're on the phone with John Lennon, and we'll get to that right after these words. John, how are you? Hello, Mark. How are you? A, a pleasure to have you on our airways again. You were here live when you uh, were in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh -huh. for John Sinclair. We carried that live that evening, so John could hear it in jail, if you remember. Oh, yeah, that was a great moment. Right? That was a great moment. <laughs> and uh, that was the last time you were on our air. It's a pleasure uh, to have you on again. I have this news story in front of me that came over the teletype, John, that says that uh, yesterday on radio station CHU. Yeah. You uh, uh, talked about your deportation situation and and, uh, and hinted that possibly Toronto would be your place of residence. It's amazing how these things get out. It is amazing how they. <laughs> uh, no, the, the, I was doing a, a thing with with uh, Chum up in Toronto, and they said, "Have you ever thought of living in Canada?" And I said, "Yes." It sort of passed my mind, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, you know, and I, I, I was. From that, it was construed to the... That, yeah. Amazing. Also, they thought I was in Canada when I was talking to some people. So now I'm, I'm living in Canada. No, well, I like Canada, you know, but I, I, the States is where I want to live. You know, uh -huh. I wouldn't be going through all this hassle. I would have just run to Toronto, right? What is the deal on the deportation situation, John? Well, you know, every now and then they announce I've got 30 days to live. <laughs> I mean, what am I saying? 30 days to get out, you know? Uh-huh. And then... I panic and call my lawyer and he says, well, we're appealing and it'll give you a few more months, you know. Uh -huh. And it keeps going on and on like that. And it's been going on like that for three years. I've been living here three years now in New York. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I hopefully I'll be living here for a long time to come. I just like to say, people always ask me, what can we do to help, you know. That was going to be my next question. Oh, well, uh, good. So I, I'm ahead of you there, right? All right. The best thing people can do is to write to their congressman or senator or something that just shows them that somebody's interested, you know? Because mm -hmm. as long as they think somebody's interested, they're inclined to to think about it. Otherwise, you know, it's a case of, oh, he, he was thrown out. Oh, really? He's gone? You I know? Don't... And because uh, it's like advertisers. They think if they... It, well, it's true, probably. If they get a letter from one person, it represents 20, you know? Yeah, that's true. I, I think our congressman here in Michigan is uh, Congressman Hart. I could be wrong. I'll check it out after we get off the phone. And you got to have Hart, yes. <laughs> really, and give his name on the air so that everybody can uh, do that for you. That it, would be nice. I'd like to thank people in advance and the people that write to me asking what to do. I only came up with this one because I couldn't think of what people could do, you know? Uh-huh. It would be a, an awful shame if, if for the reasons they're trying to kick you out, they kicked you out of the country. It would be a great loss. Uh, it would be a great loss to me and to everybody that, that uh, respects you and your music and what you've done. And it just seems a, a bit much to go to those extremes for uh, the reasons that they're giving. Well, that's very kind of you, and thank you. Um, we have your new album we've been playing. Oh, that's good. Uh, I played a song yesterday. I haven't completely digested all the lyrics and music yet. Yeah, that's, well, you can't get it in one take. That's it. But there's a song called Glass and Steel. Oh, Steel and Glass. Yeah. Steel and Glass, right. Yeah. But it sounds to me a lot like uh, a, a, another song of yours called How Do You Sleep. The orchestration was real similar. Yeah, well, I tend to um, fall back on myself a lot. You know, I like repeating a, a word or a, or a little lick from another song, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, you, you're right, there is a similarity there, except for this one is about nobody in particular, although you hear me whispering, who is it, who is it? <laughs> so I just like to play a few games, you know? Uh-huh. I thought perhaps it was the second in the series of um, songs about Paul McCartney. Oh, no way, no way. Paul and I are just good friends, as they say, and we've spent a lot of time together this year, more than we have for three years. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, as I said, I have I can't leave the country because of my till I get my green card. I don't think. You, you, and uh, Paul sometimes has trouble getting in, but we have spent some time together. How's Ringo? I mean, definitely not. About, oh, Ringo's in fine fettle. I was just down there recording with him in Los Angeles. He's doing his next album. And it sounds like another winner, too. So he's in good form. We've been playing your um, Pussycats album. Oh, that's good. I'm glad somebody's <laughs> playing it. <laughs> it's pretty funny stuff. Yeah, well, you, you can imagine what it was like in the studio. <laughs> I was reading in Rolling Stone, the current issue of Rolling Stone, about the sessions for your current album, and uh, that you were working real hard, working those guys real hard. Uh, who all's who else on the album? There's Jim Price, isn't there? And no, no, it's Jim Keltner on drums, Klaus Vorman on bass, uh, Nicky Hopkins on piano, also Ken Asher on keyboards. He was on Mind Games. Uh -huh. Asher. Uh, let me think. Oh, Jesse Ed Davis on guitar. Yeah. He used to be with Taj Mahal. Right. Uh, they're all people I've worked with before, one way or the other. 
uh, except for Arthur Jenkins is new, who's a percussionist, fantastic percussionist. Uh, there's Bobby Keys, Howard Johnson, uh, Steve Madeo, and two other fellows who I can't think offhand, Frank and somebody else who are on horns. I had a weird horn section, five pieces. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, of course, the, the orchestra range. The artwork on your new album cover um, made, gave me a few chuckles. Are those pictures on the cover really your artwork when you were a child? Yeah, those are things I did in, uh, there were the dates on them, right, 1952. Right. And that's a period, uh, in, in England, you go through an exam called the 11 plus when you're 11, and they hang it over you from age five, you know? Uh -huh. If you don't pass this exam, you're finished. <laughs> So that's the only exam that I ever passed, actually, because I was really scared. Well, where are these? And after that, they just let you do what you like, and I painted, so that's why I used them. You're quite an artist. Oh, uh, thank you. Where, where, um, where did these uh, paintings come from? Where have they been stored all these years? Well, uh, my Auntie Mimi, to, you can see her name. I right. gave her one when it was, you know, to Mimi or something from John. Right. Uh, she kept a lot of my childhood stuff, you know. That's terrific. Yeah. I don't think, you know, I think we all made those things as a child, but how many people still have them available? Uh, yeah, I lost a lot of stuff, you know. I used to, you know what he used to say to her? What's that? To say, one day I'll be famous and you've throw, you thrown out my poem, you know? <laughs> and we used to have big fights about it. But she used to keep sort of things that I didn't want her to keep and throw away things I wanted to keep. Uh -huh. here, in the, here in the States, it was always, uh, I want to grow up to be the president of the United States, you know, or your, your aunt, the equivalent to anybody's aunt Mimi would always say, well, someday you'll grow up and be the president. What a horrible thought at this oh, point. Oh, yeah, well, I always wanted to be Van Gogh or Oscar Wilde because that's the one she used to like. Uh huh. Uh -huh. She always had those books around the house, you know. John, have you planned any road uh, shows? Now, I notice um, your former uh, partner, Mr. Harrison, is, is going on the road and doing quite a tour, and it'll bring him to Detroit December the 4th. Uh, wondering, if, since Dylan has gone on the road, and, and now Harrison and other artists of your stature, uh, have you given it any consideration? Well, I, I do in as much as the people uh, sort of ask me about it, because George and Dylan did it. Uh-huh. Uh, the last time I was really keen to go on the road was 1970, 71, when I had that band Elephant's Memory. You know? Right. And that's the reason we got together with, with the band, because I was going to go on the road. And then the immigration thing was really heavy then. I had to go to court all the time. Mm -hmm. And it really sort of put me off, you know? I, I mean, I had them hanging around for 18 months. Uh -huh. And then now the problem is if I get the, the feel to go on the road again, as George will have had to do, which he's going to do now, which is pull a band together, right? Right. And it's not like having a band where you can just say, okay, let's go. You know, I, all you have to do is call Bill Graham or somebody, right, and say, put it on. <laughs> but it's like starting from scratch, you know? And I just don't, I've only just sort of, I just got over the whole pressure of immigration and all that crap, you know? Yeah, so it'll... Even though it's still going on, I've just sort of, in my head, I've switched it off. I can dig it, so... I'm just getting back into the music, and I, I'm more keen to go back into the studio than actually go and perform whatever gets you through the night on stage, you know? It looks like whatever gets you through the night is uh, destined to be a hit single. It entered the charts uh, as I was peeking into the charts last week. It, it was 58 with a bullet, which is a good place to start. Yeah, it's really doing well, and I'm glad, you know? It's, it's a, it's a rocking single. Oh, I'm, it's amazing, because that was the one that I, I just, just sort of threw in and wrote at the last minute. You know, it's always like that. Uh -huh. And all the others I was working on like crazy. John, there's a couple of quotes on your new album I found amusing and interesting enough to ask you about. Possession is nine-tenths of the problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that seems to be uh, uh, on your album. And, and did you really see a UFO? I did really. I wouldn't have put it on, you know, if I hadn't seen it. There's a little tiny note that people could miss if they don't look carefully down in one of the lower corners of your uh, liner notes. It says, I saw a UFO September something, something, something. W what was the story behind that? Where, where did that happen? Well, I was in New York in an apartment, and I was just standing by the roof, and I looked left, and there was this thing about 100 yards away. I could have hit it with a stone if I threw it. And it was really, I could have even seen it without my glasses, and I'm very short-sighted. <laughs> and I was looking at it and thinking, what is it? What is it? You know, is it a helicopter? No, it's making no noise. Is it a balloon? You know, is it the blimp? Because uh -huh. there's all these lights around the bottom of it, uh -huh. flashing on and off. It didn't say American Airlines on it, did it? Said, it didn't say anything. <laughs> it didn't make a noise. And you know, one part of me all the time was saying, 
that's a UFO, you know. Uh huh. But I, you, some part of you doesn't want to believe it, you know. Did you uh, did you go to the authorities with that information? I, well, I didn't because you know Lennon sees UFO. I mean, that's enough to get me kicked out. For, <laughs> you know, it's bad enough as it is. I suppose. It would be... That's why I, I wasn't. I almost took it off the album. At one time, I, I said, "Pull it off." A, I'm going to get people with weird-looking eyes coming up to me saying, "I've come from the saucer," you know. And I've seen it too. Yeah. 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 And the other bit is they're going to say he's crazy, you know. But I thought, look. I saw it, you know, I don't care what anybody says, there it was, and nobody can explain what it was to me, so it's, I said UFO, you know. Amazing, this is in California. No, this is in New York. New York of all places. below the height of, of the buildings. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was like, you know, if somebody had been in a higher building, they would have looked down on it. Did, did you talk to anybody else that said they, uh, that they saw it too? Uh, I got a friend to call the police and call the newspapers the next day uh -huh. to check if anybody else had seen anything. Uh -huh. And a couple of people had rung in and seen something in the same area at the same time as me. People in New York are sometimes oblivious to reality, though. Things could be happening around them and they wouldn't even notice it. You know, well, the... I'll stick up for New York a bit. I think it's pretty real here, you know. It's just that, you know, I would never have noticed if I hadn't happened to look out. You know, I looked around me and nobody else was looking out of windows or anything. The cars were going on because it's quiet. Mm -hmm. It's very low. It's not that you expect a sort of Martian in the sky. It was below rooftop level and it was just coasting around very quietly like a tourist, you know. Amazing. And it was just pot luck that I saw it. Amazing. Excuse the expression. <laughs> and I was crazy as a guy. <laughs> I was, I was straight as a die. I've been hearing some uh, some pretty amazing stories about you and, and Harry and Ringo and the things that go on on the Sunset Strip at night. Uh -huh. The illustrious Sunset Strip. To a person living in Detroit, the Sunset Strip is just a rumor. But it's actually there and it has the Rainbow and the Roxy and all those places. Uh, any interesting things that have been going on lately? Well, I mean, it, all get, it's, it sounds all very wonderful, all very horrible in the paper, but it all gets down to... A, a couple of the the guys getting together and getting a little too drunk, you know. I do that. I do that a couple nights a week myself. Right. Well, we did it a couple <laughs> of times, and we kept getting in the papers. But I always noticed that my name seemed to be the one that carried the story, you know. Uh -huh. So I turned around to Harry and said, "Hey, look, this is this is getting us nowhere. Let's go and make a record." So we went in together and made his Putty <laughs> Cat album. You know? The used Eddie Lawrence, the old philosopher, or someone did on the commercial. I saw it on TV. Oh, yeah. Uh, Harry turned me on to him. He oh, he's fantastic. He's funny. He's really funny. He's yeah. had lots of records over the year where uh, he's done that same bit. I know. Uh, Harry does a fantastic in impression of him, too. You know, you, you, I don't know what he does. You say you, you tell the engineer to replay and he wipes all the masters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing that is that, your, good. is that your problem, Bunky? Yeah, he, he, I, I, I never heard of him before, but he's really funny. He's been around a long time. Um, John, I want to thank you. It, it's it's really been terrific. It's a having, pleasure, Mark. It's, it's really nice having you on the radio. Good luck with your deportation situation. I will promise to find out our congressman's name here in southern Michigan and uh, get it on the air so people can uh, write for your situation. That's very kind of you. Good luck with your new album. Do you have any TV plans, John? I w uh, no, uh, the people come up with offers, but I, I just haven't quite got into it, you know? Uh -huh. Because uh, the thing that puts me off TV is the sound. Although I love TV, you know, and I'm a real TV watcher. And uh, it, TV's more interesting to me than going on the road. Do you think those the, the new rock and roll that's been on TV as of the last two years is, is a... Is a viable showcase? Well, my my attitude is it's better than nothing. I remember your One Plus One concert, which was, in my opinion, one of the finer produced uh, rock and roll extravaganzas on TV. It was nicely edited, nicely produced. The sound was A-perfect, and it was real nice. And uh, I sure hope you could uh, get behind doing something like that again. I'm more interested in, do in doing something like that than actually going on the road, you know, because TV is, is what's happening, apart from radio, you know. It reaches so many like people. Them going into people's houses. You that's know? it. That's it. Right into their living rooms. Yeah. I, I think there's a format. I just have to get the right format to do a, a different kind of show, you know. Yeah. John, one last question. I've always wanted to ask you this. What's your favorite record that you've ever made? What's the one you're most proud of? Oh, I, I can hardly answer it because I have a couple, you know. If it's a Beatle one, maybe Come Together or I'm the Walrus, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Thank John you, Lennon. Good luck. Bye-bye.